show without express written consent from myself, Greg Dzinski, or the Art of Relationships. Thank you. Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Art of Relationships show. It is Thursday, I think. Hopefully everybody's doing okay. Going to have a little bit of a fun show today talking about fetishes and fantasies. And I want to give a huge, huge round of applause uh, to a professional sexologist, a huge researcher affiliated with the Kinsey Institute. Um, it's Justin Lee Miller, and he did a huge, huge um, research project that took years to do um, in his book. I want to give him props, and his book is uh, Tell Me What You Want, and it's available everywhere, everywhere Amazon and everything. If you have, <clears throat> if you happen to be a sex researcher, helping couples out and everything else out there, you know what, alongside me, um, check it out. It's a great book. I still have to finish a little bit of it yet, but a lot of this research is up to date. It came out last summer, or last spring actually, and um, you know, it's a terrific, terrific uh, research piece. He busted his ass. A lot of legitimate, professional, uh, verifiable research about, you know, fantasies and about fetishes. So going to get into, do I talk about fantasies? Do I talk about fetishes? What do you want me to talk about first? But anyways, we're going to get into the aspect about um, why not get fetishes out of the way and then I'll get into fantasies and associate, you know, his research and stuff. And I talked about this, you know, years for years and years and years when I taught uh, sex, um, human sexuality classes for various colleges and talking about, you know, fetishes typically are associated with inanimate objects and all this stuff. And there's so much, and it's funny when we talk about fetishes, everybody's eyes open wide and their ears are get big, you know, like a, a bunny rabbit, if you will, like perked all up and everybody's listening because regardless where you fall, you know, with fetishes and sexual fantasies, it's interesting. Let's face it, right? And if you don't think it's interesting or even peculiar and grabs your attention, either maybe you're lying or maybe you're not human, okay? So uh, some fetishes, whatever, right? It's about being sexually turned on by inanimate objects, okay? Some people have shoe fetishes, right? And, or feather fetishes, leather fetish, fetishes, you know, plastic, vinyl, all this stuff, foot fetishes, <coughs> all these aspects. And, you know, do women have fetishes? Absolutely. Do men have fetishes? Yes. And it's sort of ironic that it seems like, you know, men get, you know, sort of blamed or whatever for having most of the fetishes. Maybe, maybe not, right? Now, women have fetishes, too. Maybe, you know, women, you want your toes licked. Maybe you have a foot fetish where you want your feet and your toes licked. You know what? Maybe you want them all dirty and licked, too. Or you want them cleaned, okay? So when we talk about fetishes, um, it, it's sort of it's sort of fun, but it's sort of taboo type of thing. And, you know, the taboo sort of ties in with the fantasy type aspects. And you look at the fetishes, you know what? What sort of, you know what? What works with you, okay? There's feet fetishes, right? There's panty fetishes, which, let's face it, again, it's us guys, typically. Maybe not always. And, you know, the panty fetishes and the feet and, the, you know, maybe boots, that type of thing. You know what? Do you like, oh, you love those stiletto heel boots, right, guys, and all those aspects? You know, what is your, do you have a fetish? Not everybody has a fetish, okay? And looking at, you know, what a fetish is, and a lot of times it gets into the situation where, you know what, I need to be, that's the only way I can be turned on, right? Is, you know what, if you wear these stiletto high heel boots or you wear these, you know, maybe people have a fetish about it's winter here in the Midwest and snow and slush and all that stuff. Maybe you want these big, you know, freaking winter boots things that turn you on and all this stuff. And looking at these aspects that, you know what, are you able to get turned on without these aspects, right? Is it a true fetish? And there's been, you know, a lot of research. And I mentioned Justin Lee Miller's work, uh, phenomenal, incredible work. And I want to, you know, give props again and mention the name of his book is Tell Me what you want. How appropriate, right? When it comes into sexual fantasies, when it comes into fetishes and all this stuff. But a lot of fetishes, you know, it's 
there's a lot of myths out there, okay? Uh, a lot of people assume they can't have an erection. They can't have an orgasm, men or women, unless they are turned on by these inanimate objects, right? Be it boots, feet, be it, you know, feathers, like I said, maybe, you know, whips, maybe leather, vinyl, whatever it is, okay? They need to feel it. They need to touch it to be turned on. And looking at these aspects, and there are so many different fetishes out there you can, you know, look at. Oh, they need to have fetishes about, um, you know, they can only have sex in a car to be able to be pleased or sexually gratified. They need to have sex outside. Maybe they have a fetish, you know, with the paraphilias, you know, about voyeurism, exhibitionism. Uh, all these type of, you know different types of fetishes. Oh man, it, it turns me on thinking we're going to get caught out in, on the beach or in public to have sex. How many people have been in that situation? Maybe you're on a balcony in a hotel and you know what? It's turning you on and it's the best sex you have because it's sort of taboo and it's sort of, oh my God, if we get caught. But Let's face it, people, are part of you out there thinking, man, I hope I get caught. This is sort of cool. And you could be, you know what? Doesn't everyone's thinking, you know, it's in your early 20s, college years. But, you know what? Maybe some of these fetishes or fantasies about, you know, exhibitionists and all this stuff. And, you know what? I need to make you aware that voyeurism, you know, peeping toms, or nosy Nancy's as they're called, as Justin mentions them in his book, that, you know what, these are illegal. Just to make you clear, you know what, oh, Greg said to try this. We listened to the Art of Relationship show and to try this aspect and that, you know what, I'm making you aware, okay? If you do these things, be warned, you can go to jail. You can get arrested. You can have fines and all that stuff, okay? So looking at, you know, and there's a big thing out there that, you know, about um, gender identity, about, you know, transgender movement and all this stuff and gender identity when it comes to fetishes and stuff. And one big one that sort of gets thrown out there often is about cross-dressing, okay? And let's face it, most cross-dressing are about, you know, men. Cross-dressing, maybe sharing their ladies' panties, sharing their bras, maybe wanting to wear their dress. And, you know, some men might do it in public. And some men, most of these men, are, you know what, they do it in the privacy of their own home. Maybe underneath their suit and tie, maybe they got girls' bras and panties on. Wouldn't you like to wonder if, you know what, one of your co-workers, you're like, hmm, I wonder if he would be a cross-dresser type of thing. And there's a lot of myths out there. And, believe it or not, the stats, around 90%, even a little higher, 90 93% of the stats of those individuals that cross-dress happen to be heterosexual men. And believe it or not, of those 90 to 93% of cross-dressing heterosexual men, they are married or have been married. 90%, anywhere from 87 to 90% of those individual men that cross-dress, have, they happen to be married or in, you know what, a heterosexual monogamous relationship. So there's a lot of myth out there that, you know, men who cross-dress tend to be, mm, you know what, they want to be a woman. They're actually transgendered. Not at all. They don't want to be a woman. They just like feeling their femininity. They just, you know what, have this fetish about wearing women's clothes. If it's, you know, some assume or research assume that maybe it's associated with, you know, getting in their feminine side, about getting close to their mother again. There's a lot of myths out there. Or maybe they just like the feel of the fabric. Who knows? Maybe it makes them feel, you know, closer to their partner, female partner type thing. So there's a lot of myths out there. It doesn't mean that men who cross-dress are gay. They might be, okay? But majority of them, they're not gay. They don't want to be gay. They don't have fantasies of, you know, having sex with another man. They are typically heterosexual men. Now, again... You know, outside the high percentages, like I said, 90, 93% are heterosexual men and 87, uh, you know, 90% of those men are, uh, are or have been married and 
monogamous heterosexual relationships. Go figure, right? So there's a lot of myths out there that out there, oh, men who cross dress really want to be a woman, really are you know gay and they're fighting this. No, that's a myth, people. So I want you to identify with those aspects and look at, you know what, damn, what is going on? And that doesn't mean, and there's a lot of women that are in that situation to where, you know what, oh my God, is my man, oh my God, he might look better in my panties and broths than I do. But, but you look at, you know, a lot of women are freaked out. Is he really gay? Is he, does he really, you know, have gender identity challenges that he wants to be a woman? Not necessarily. He just likes it. So can you use that? Talking about fantasy, can you use it as role playing? Do you, maybe you role play that? You know what, maybe ladies out there, one of your fantasies is to be with another woman. And it doesn't necessarily mean you're lesbian, you're gay, that type of thing. Maybe, you know, it's about experimentation and you want to try it. And you can fantasize about him wearing, you know, your bra, your panties, maybe his own. That type of aspect when it comes to cross-dressing. So there's a lot of myths out there. And I want you to be educated and be educated the right way. There's a lot of religious organizations out there that throw a lot of myths out there and they do a lot of harm to individuals just to fit their model, just to fit their belief systems. And I don't want people to be misinformed, okay? It's huge out there. There's a lot of bias, a lot of judgment out there about people in general, especially when it comes to, you know, fetishes. I can't even talk. Fetishes, cross-dressing, that type of aspect, okay? And you know what? Be informed. You know what? Teach. Be open about it. And, you know, oh, I really love this. I really love that. And what is the issue that makes you uncomfortable with that fetish, okay? Is it really hurting you? Is it weird? Is it sick? Is it gross? That type of aspect. And go after about what really works for you. And you know what? What you don't like about it, okay? It's not about, you know, again, it's not about hurting anybody else or hurting yourself. I'm not about that. I'll never promote that. But it's looking about, you know what? Oh, boy, what's your secret fetish? And is that fetish with an animate object? Or, you know what? Is it a fantasy? And there's a huge mix in between a fantasy, you know, in the fetish aspect. And a lot of the aspect, you know, like I said, the fetish tends to be, you know, what you might not be able to get off or be sexually gratified unless, you know what, she's wearing these stilettos, like I mentioned, or wearing leather, or maybe cross-dressing, or that, whatever your fetish is, you know, kissing, licking, sucking on toes and feet, whatever they are, okay? Now, going on to fantasies, and Justin mentioned that there are actually, he found, or broke it down into seven categories of sexual fetish, or fantasies okay about multi-partner fantasies how many people have fantasized about you know what everyone talks about being in a threesome being in you know an orgy or group sex and that's where the first category comes from you know about fantasies broken down into multi-partner sex you know maybe swinging maybe about you know that type of aspect that it's a threesome maybe a foursome okay and you know, it can go into swinging, but that's actually another category in partner sharing and swapping and all that. Then, you know what? But a threesome is that sharing your partner type of thing aspect, okay? So multi-partner sex. Do you have a fantasy about that? Maybe women have fantasies about, you know what, having a threesome with two guys. And, you know what? Are you able to talk about your fantasies? But a word of warning, like I said with voyeurism, exhibitionism, there are consequences with sharing your fantasies, okay? I'm all about people sharing fantasies. Oh, yeah, I thought, uh, you know, I'd love to do this, I'd love to do that. But sharing fantasies, number one, doesn't mean you want to follow through with it, right? Oh, yeah, it'd be cool sort of looking a threesome or an orgy or swinging type of thing. You know what, that'd be sort of cool. I wonder what that'd be like. But that doesn't mean that person wants to actually act out on it, okay? So, second word of advice is there are consequences in sharing your fantasies, okay? Because you might share a fantasy, oh, you know what, I, I want you, I want to lick your feet or lick your anus type of thing. And it's a sexual fantasy of yours. Maybe you want to act it out, maybe you don't. But what will your partner think if you share that sexual fantasy? Are they going to 
feel like you're weird, you're odd, you're strange, you're a derelict of society type of thing. Oh my God, how could you do that? And to be honest with you, that is a consequence that could happen. I hope it doesn't happen, but I'm going to throw it out there. A lot of people don't know that, and you have people out there, oh yeah, share your fantasy, share your fantasies. I'm all about that, but I'm also going to give you a word of advice and acknowledgement and awareness that, you know what, by sharing certain fantasies, you know what, you might cause problems in your relationship or um, marriage. They might look at you a different way depending on the level of fantasy, what your fantasy is, that type of aspect, okay? So, um, number two category, according to uh, Justin Lee Miller, is power control. This is what comes in the sexual fantasies about bondage, about dominatrix or discipline, okay? Or sadist, masochist aspect, that, right, you want to inflict pain. Maybe you're one that wants, you know, that thin line between pain and pleasure type aspect that you want to be spanked so hard that you want, you know, nipple clamps so freaking tight on you. Whatever that aspect is, uh, you want it to be a sub, okay, submissive, that you want your partner to be more dominant domineering in the bedroom or you know sort of treat you like crap and call you all kind of names about power control and everything and that is the second most highly populated fantasy category according to Justin and these are you know ranged in order of not importance but popularity there we go from one to seven okay novelty adventure variety of sex. You know what? How many people have heard about, you know, the furries, right? About dressing up in an animal while you have sex or dressing up as an animal, not in an animal. Let me rephrase that. Excuse me. Um, but, you know, the furries, the novelty. Maybe you want to, you know, have sex, you know what, in a, you know, bathroom type of thing or a restroom. Uh, maybe you want to have a bathroom in a dressing room in a store type of thing. You know, what is the adventure novelty? But again, you have to look at the consequences of that. What about taboo sex and forbidden sex? Again, having sex in public, the voyeurism, and you have to be careful, right? Because there are legal consequences to these aspects, okay? Maybe it's, you know, the taboos and forbidden fantasies of like I mentioned in the, the fetishes about licking you know licking feet or maybe licking anuses whatever you want to try these and it's so taboo maybe some people right it's taboo to have oral sex maybe that is taboo to them to me hell no it isn't <laughs> again but everybody has their own opinion their own values their own moral systems and these are just running down you know Again, everybody has different levels of what these, you know, multi-partner sexes, what power and control means, maybe what novelty means. And going on to number four, like I mentioned about taboo sex, about what that is to you. And it's different. Maybe taboo sex to somebody is having the lights on while you have sex, right? Maybe doggy style, that type of thing, is taboo to some people where, let's face it, most people have sexual fantasies and a sexual interest. Both men and women love doggy style. It's just the way it is. The way, well, I could get into the descriptive aspects about how the penis might hit the, you know, urethra sponge or G-spot type aspect, that type of thing, okay? Now, number five, you know, sexual fantasy about partner sharing. This is more into more than, you know, three people. Group sex, swinging, partner swapping, that you get into poly. That would be another fantasy for some people, right? About being in a poly relationship that you can have sex with a bunch of people, okay? That you have this arrangement or deal. But do you, not that you act out on the sexual fantasies. Not that you don't, but can you have fun with it? Can you play with it, okay? Can you sort of joke about it? And maybe you want to try something. Maybe you don't. Maybe your partner and you could be on the same page, okay? It's a way to spice up your life, spice up your love life, and spice up your sex life, okay? It can be fun, okay? But again, look at the consequences, as I mentioned, that your partner might look at you sideways and look at you differently, like, oh boy, now I lost respect for you. Now, oh my God, I can't even touch you because you want to do what? With who? With how? There are consequences, people. So, 
Number six is about intimacy, romance, and passion, according to Justin, okay, in his book. And this is about, it tends to be about the sexual fantasy about having that deep emotional connection, okay? The fantasy about, you know, being able to share each other's show, uh, souls and hearts. And I talk about this, okay? And I'm not talking in a fantasy state. I'm talking in a realistic aspect about being able to be fully transparent with each other, to have that emotional connection. You know what? Maybe you have the intimate, the romantic sexual fantasy on an everyday basis. Maybe that's unrealistic, okay? So you look at these sexual fantasies about the intimacy, about the passion, what that looks to you, about you getting thrown up against a wall type of thing as he looks deeply into your eyes, okay? Big time, okay? Number seven is heteroerotic, or I'm sorry, homoerotacy and gender bending according to Justin again, okay? Gender bending, uh, homoeroticism is the least popular, number seven on the list. And this comes down to maybe, you know what? Maybe you have homosexual or lesbian fantasies, okay, that you want to try. Or maybe gender bending that you want to, maybe you're sort of, you know what? Maybe, I wonder what it'd be like to be a woman. Maybe guys want to be pegged. Maybe those type of aspects, okay? Maybe women want to play the role as, you know what? Wonder it be like being a, a man and I want to, you know, have a strap-on dildo on, that type of thing, okay? And being able to have those fantasies and whatever, are you able to talk about them and go after them? And one thing that tends to be, you know, sort of different, if you will, between the genders about sexual fantasies and it's sort of ironic and dealing with a lot of couples a lot of individuals on this topic over almost 20 years now and looking at a lot of women they sex have sexual fantasies about something being done to them on average okay on average there's always exceptions and men tend to have sexual fantasies about doing something to their partner okay or to another person okay it's just sort of how that works again there are always exceptions to those rules but you know when you get into sexual fantasies think about it ladies when you have fantasies about sexual partners and everything else um are you having fantasies about something being done to you and guys out there are you typically having fantasies about something being you know that you're doing something to somebody else okay licking sucking doing whatever okay and it's not a right or wrong it's just sort of ironic how the brains work or the differences between the genders, how they look at things, and is it done by societal aspects that women tend to be more submissive, they're more givers, that type of thing, where men are more assertive, masculine, whatever. And there are men out there that, you know what, they have sexual fantasy about women doing something to them. I do too, man. <laughs> that type of aspect, and it's not a right or wrong, but kick it up a little bit, you know, talk about fetishes, talk about, you know, your sexual fantasies with your partner, and again, word of warning, what you share might be held against you, and there might be consequences from that. I don't want those, of course, but I'm um, just giving you an honest, real view of that situation, okay? So, check out my website, theheartofrelationships.org, uh, this is the Art of Relationship Show, and again, uh, a huge, huge round of applause and thank you to Justin Lee Miller for you know his contribution to professional sexology, research, couples, sexual fantasies and stuff. And his book, it's on Amazon. Check it out. Tell me what you want. That's the name of it, okay? It's scientific, uh, verifiable research that Justin has done. It's not just thrown out there with opinions, okay? Big time. So you got to be careful out there. There's a lot of opinions out there. Justin's work is very, very far from opinions, okay? Tied in with the Kinsey Institute. Check it out again. Tell me what you want. It's available on Amazon and it's basically all over the place, okay? So peace and love, everybody. Have fun with your fetishes, with your sexual fantasies. Take care, people. Bye-bye. Peace.